Hi everyone and welcome back. Welcome to my another video. And in this video, we are going to talk about the queues. So, at this queue topic, when you heard a queue, uh, it doesn't mean that we are talking about asynchronous messaging and using RabbitMQ, Kafka, and all. This queues is like a powerful design pattern uh, that NestJS is using uh, for application scaling and the performance. What happens is, let's say you are actually doing a bulk upload of the CSV codes. So internally, you have just only one main thread of the NestJS server, which is going to handle it. Instead of that, what we can use is we can actually break those particular tasks, that CPU intensive task into a independent separate process for the, the faster processing so that your other requests will also not get blocked because NestJS server is a single threaded. So it's like a, it creates a reliable channel. It creates its internal queues for processing of the jobs over the time. So, I mean, uh, you can actually listen for a particular events once the job is completed. And it, I created a simple example to orchestrate this in really nice way. Let's say I have a CSV file, which has uh, lots of records and you are just like uploading it. And the, then for each and every records, you are doing like lots of processing. It can be done in the modern architecture in different ways. Like let's say you have one server which will push each and every record to the SQS SNS and then there is another service listening to the SQS SNS and they will read each and every record and process them asynchronously over the time. That's another way. So we, here we are talking about just a vanilla approach, just like a simple design pattern with the bull. It's, it's like a package or abs abstractions or wrapper, whatever you can call that can be useful for these kind of uh, jobs. So here it's it, it breaks that heavy lifting monolith process into an independent worker process that takes care of uh, executing the records. So how we can orchestrate it? It's like a simple architecture, which I will try to draw, like uh, how it really works with the NestJS or any other simple application. You can orchestrate it with a simple express. Here we are talking about a NestJS application. So I will talk in context of the NestJS application. So here the example is simple upload CSV and process. Okay. So what we need is, okay. The customer end user is just like, like uploading uh, a CSV with a lots of record. And here is a bull is a job manager, which is sub process, which is going to handle this execution of this. So what we need to do is this is a process manager, which is going to deal with individual records. So here we are just going to process like there are like thousands of the records which we have processed it which we have pushed so there, we just need an intermediate store which can store these thousand records and then one by one push those records to the process manager the worker process which we have created so for that uh, bull is using pers redis to process the data so you need to have a redis available so we will just pair up bull with redis what the redis is doing is redis is actually like a persistent store which is going to persist the data and here these are the example like you can actually create a queue uh, job queue okay and job queue you can put a particular name to the job queue that is going to deal with your data so this is the the right set of example which i am trying to draw so what we are doing here so i will just try to outline this so here there is a producer and then there is a consumer and Redis is intermediate store. So what producer is doing? It's not like everything is being done by just like uh, in an instant. What is happening is there is an upload task. We are uploading thousands of the records. So the producer, what the producer will do is producer will just only save the job to the Redis. So that whatever the request is coming from the user, we saved it somewhere. And we can execute, we can run those jobs on the worker process independently over the time. So it's, it actually write the file to the task or persist the data to the Redis. Now Redis has your job saved there. What is the next task is the, now there is a consumer. Consumer will read it from the Redis because now we are not dependent on the request cycle. Request is there and we send the response back. Okay, saying that, okay, we will process it. But over the time, now Redis has the, the saved data. Consumer will fetch the, the records from there and it will try to process them one by one. So this is the, the overall process. It involves the producer and the consumer and how uh, we are doing it with the NestJS. NestJS API is like a processing thousands of the records 
from csv file that's a simple example we are talking about so what it will use it is using bull job manager uh, which process and manages all the records uh, because this is a cpu intensive task whenever there is a cpu intensive task no one recommends the node.js as a process which can deals with the cpu intensive task so what we are doing is these intensive tasks we can run in the background even this is the core uh, expertise of like java or uh, high level programming language but not the node.js node.js is good at real time transactions which are lightweight but when it comes to the cpu intensive task it's better to put those tasks on the worker thread which can execute those over the time right so that we are not blocking the main thread and all the other requests are not blocked so that's why we are using this bull bull will create a worker thread and that consumer will read the data read the job from the redis and now it's a background job right we can write it to the database we can do anything whatever we want but this is how it really works and when it when it comes to doing this asynchronously this is how it is done so what we are doing here is let's see the code here we just have uh, some vehicles data automobile uh, uh, apis we have so this is app to store csv data so this is like simple apis which i try to create so you'll just upload a csv file i will read each and every data and i will write that to the entities but it can have a thousands of the records right so i cannot write that on the fly i will just read the data from read the csv from the front end from the request and i will say okay i will process it and then consumer will read the data from the redis and will write it one by one over the time in the background so step one is so there are step by step type orm module because we are writing uh, data to the postgres bull module dot for root here we have provided a a store redis store that is going to store the intermediate csv file and then we are creating a registering the bull with the queue like upload queue so the consumer will use the same queue to read the data okay and here we can see this is simple modules we are using we are using bull module and here we already have a redis running postgres running so we got both the containers up and running so we can start consuming it so here this is a redis i have a docker compose already provided and this is my postgres both the containers and it's like a volume volume mounting and i can just start the container so redis is running and postgres is running now this application i have just have started so this is just like a step by step two step process and this is a db module dot for root that is nothing but a typo rm module initialization by passing the entity class okay here this is a step 1 step 2 and step 3 so we have a redis container then step 1 register the bull module with the redis and step 2 is registering a queue and now let's go to the controller so what we are doing in the controller it's like a file upload api and everybody knows how to do a file upload with the the nest js we are using here file interceptor and uh, here we are injecting the upload queue also right and nest js file uploader uses this uh, multer multer to upload the file and here i'm uploading on the disk so i'm just uh, getting the files and i'm uploading the files to the csv folder which you can see in the source folder i mean you you can upload a file and directly upload the file to the s3 or azure or whatever your destination here i'm using in memory folder store so on server there is a csv folder where you will dump the csv file which you are uploading and then i have added the csv to the queue this dot file queue dot add csv and then i'm just passing that file that's a simple job i'm doing and now this is a processor right so this is actually processing the queue so this is like upload processor it's like a job handler which is going to handle the cpu intensive task so i will be injecting the entity like the vehicle entity which contains a vehicle model whose company vehicle name vehicle model number and all and then it is reading so this is like you are adding that to the process and here it is processing the csv this is upload processor it is writing that to the file so this is what your upload file will do it is writing that to the csv file so now if you see this this is the process so whenever you are uploading a file what you are doing is you are actually so this is a process csv this is actually handler which is handling the csv records right so what it is doing is it is picking up the file from the path okay 
and then uh, it is extracting the array of uh, i mean it converted the csv records into an array and then it is just storing those into the vehicle repository so this is how you are actually saving the record into the database so it's like a process csv it's in a job which uh, has been registered on the queue so if we try to look into this what actually is happening we will start the application so db config synchronized true that means when you start the application you will have a tables created that's a good thing we don't need to worry about migrations it has created a vehicles table in the database and now we can just upload the file so this is a simple localhost 3000 api vehicles upload and in the multi part you are just uploading a file so what actually is happening so when you are uploading a file it's entering okay there is a unique key because uh, i think we are using the primary key id primary key which is a vehicle number so we have to i mean this is just understood that uh, this is how this is why it will happen because the record has is being passed with same id one two three something like that so we need to change it and i will just change the file name i have pa i'm passing the random unique file ids unique uh, vehicle ids one two like 11 12 13 14 15 so this is different now and you can see the data is also populated 11 12 13 14 so this is how the end to end flow is working so this is our controller which is just uploading the file like file interceptor there is a csv is the file name coming from the api request and then we are adding this csv file to the file queue so that means when you are sending a request you will not get anything in the response because you just added the file to the queue and that's it it's returning an empty response you can return a state a status code 204 no content but uh, it's still http post okay then the next step is how who is writing this file who is reading this file and processing it so now this is the main processor right there is upload queue processor what it is doing is because uh, your file upload controller is already writing the file to the disk so writing the file to the disk is already done now either you use a redis or here there is no actual uh, role of redis here we just store the file to the disk and then this processor is actually reading the file from the file path right and then it is just processing it and it, it is executing it so this particular job this job is saved on the redis i mean there is a role uh, although you yeah, like the the file read is happening through the disk but this job which is saved on the redis and then this consumer this particular process csv job is reading that that job from the redis and you can see from the job you are getting the data job.data.file.path so we are not storing the whole file file in, in the redis we are just storing the file path to the redis and then this job is reading it from there if you see here what we are putting in the redis this dot file queue dot add csv and this is the information we, which we are persisting to the redis the file object which is like okay job dot file dot name this is what we are storing and the consumer while processing it is reading the file name which needs to be picked up from the disk and the same thing we are doing here job dot data dot file dot path you got the file which needs to be read and we are using this csv file csv to json a module which is converting a csv into json array and then we are writing it to simply type orm dot insert type orm dot create so we are using this type orm repository vehicle repository and this is how this end to end thing is happening so producer what what producer is doing here is producer is just uploading the file and returning uh, 201 okay like uh, 204 status code which is content empty now producer is saving the job producer is had saved the job which is a file name to the redis now the queue this consumer will read the file the file name from the redis and then it knows okay this is the file path and this is the file name read it from the the disk and we already know the path read it iterate it and write it to the database so uh, that's it so that's pretty much we have for this example like how we are doing the simple queue implementation i mean i will share the code you can take a look and uh, 
let me know if you have any questions uh, thanks everyone